So I noticed um, on, on a different topic, I noticed that um, you, you've been doing these videos on Carl Jung. Um, oh, hold on. <laughs> Let me, I'm just channeling the Jungian drum beats archetypes. Okay, P I'm ready. Please no, because up until, up until now I understood everything you said, and <laughs> I, I like that. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, what motivated you? Is, is this part of this kind of BS detector? It is BS detector. I wouldn't have cared about him were it not for the fact. Now, people say, oh, you're doing this because despite the fact that you pretend you're friends with Jordan Peterson, you really hate him now because he's successful. So you're just jealous. Uh, That's right. It. <laughs> but, and the reason, which I stated in my first uh, thing, was that I receive a lot of emails and requests to weigh in on Carl Jung because he has been reinvigorated into the conversation yep. by Jordan, yep. right? Yep. And therefore, what I was doing there is after receiving the 13th trillion message asking me, hey, Dr. Saad, can you give us a sense of what you think of the astrologer of the human mind and grand bullshitter Carl Jung? This is, these are my yep. words. Yep. Uh, and so so now I, I sort of gave a bit of a thing with, with this trilogy of young in uh, uh, clips that I did but now people are upset why aren't you spending more time actually delving into dismantling each of his positions and my general point was for the same reasons that I'm not going to come up with a series as to why creationism is bullshit and it's not because I'm running away from it look has he said anything that makes sense of course he even used as an evolutionary psychologist he used evolutionary ideas some of them are wrong, but he certainly had some very nice insights about how evolutionary theory might be relevant in shaping archetypes. Sure. But is a lot of the stuff that he's written and said complete mystical occultism, new age, utter non-scientific bullshit? 100%. And I'm not going to waste my time re-prosecuting a case when psychologists have left young 50 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And... and so what do you think Jordan is doing? I mean, is he is he finding the better stuff there or, or is he bought into some of the BS? I, I think it's it's a bit of both. A bit of both I yeah. think that the I think that uh, Jordan's message. Uh, look, when when I sit down with Jordan on, on my shows or in other times when we sure, met and so sure. on and we're doing sort of just hardcore science stuff, it's fantastic. But his greater message where, you know, he's he's also a self-help guru and so on, in a sense, it is more powerful if it includes elements of the Jungian stuff and the quasi-religious stuff. And the, right. You become a yeah. lot more of an apostle and a true guru of how to lead one's life if you incorporate some of that mystical bullshit. So I don't know if he does it willfully or whether he's done it because it ultimately uh, taps into some of his greater goals. Uh, but in a sense, I'm quite disappointed in it. And as I explained in my clip that I recently released where I said, look, Jordan and I could be great allies on 95% of things, but I could disagree with him on some things. And that's not because I hate him or I'm jealous of him. That's because I wouldn't have the intellectual integrity that people know me for if I suddenly say, oh, but when it comes to Jordan, if he ever says anything that I consider bullshit, I'll keep my mouth shut. That makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, people are so afraid of, you know, intellectuals criticizing one another. I mean, but that's what we do, right? I mean, part of what we do is we debate ideas, we discuss ideas, and as long as it doesn't become personal, as long as what we're talking about is in the realm of ideas, this is what we do. And to stay silent when somebody else is saying something that you think is bullshit, is wrong. It's right. just, it's, it's not honest. And, and, and look, he, he, I'll give you one or two examples of other things, uh, which I'm not sure if I've weighed in on this publicly or not. So, you know, Jordan argues about, you know, how could you have morality without this Judeo Christian yeah, foundation? Yeah, we would yeah. each be these selfish, psychopathic. Well, agents. we can talk about selfish. I mean, right, we can right, talk about yeah, the use true. of that word. <laughs> right, right. True. <laughs> yeah. and, and so when I when I when I see something like this, I mean, it really holds me back. Yeah. It to me, yeah. that statement would be like me saying on a, on a public forum, everybody knows that the earth is flat. Yep. There is no proof that yep. the earth is not flat. And so that position that there is no clear 
unequivocal, unassailable scientific basis of morality is so outlandish that it borders on saying that the earth is flat. So when I now criticize that position of Jordan, it's not I hate Jordan. I love Jordan. Yeah, Jordan is a yeah, lovely guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, he's a friend. I would love to have him over for dinner. But do I think that that particular statement is false? Yes. Yeah, and, I, and we, we'll, we agree on that completely. Uh, we might come up with a different uh, outcome of what morality is, but we agree that, I mean, it's ridiculous, to, and, but it's a commonly held belief. I mean, Jordan is not unusual here. Jordan is the mainstream. I think, yeah. I think we're the ones who are unusual. You know, Sam Harris says we can bridge the is odd gap. I believe we can, I, you know, I, I believe we can bridge the is odd gap that's, that science does lead to morality. You can, you can find more, you know, you can find your moral values and virtues from a scientific analysis of human nature um, and, and of reality. But, uh, but the common view, you know, reflected by Jordan and Prager and Ben Shapiro, but, but really by everybody out there, is that no, you need some external something un yeah. that is not understandable to give you morality. Otherwise, you become a murderous, otherwise, you become an animal with well, no I, capacity I, 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 to reason and control yourself. I, I always say that, you know, were it not for the Torah, I would right now be looking to decapitate puppies and rape their their headless bodies. It is only through reading uh, Deuteronomy and the other the, the five books of Moses that I refrain from raping dead puppies. Right? Uh, I mean, it is so laughable that. And, and by the way, the reason why I, I feel a tension in in criticizing uh, Jordan because on the one hand he is a friend, you know, absolutely. But on the other hand. As he is becoming bigger, yep. uh, then my commitment to truth supersedes my affection for, you. for our friendship, right? Yep. And yep. so I'm torn, right? Because yep. I'm because I don't want to be attacking him in the same frontal, no nonsense way that I sometimes can. And so I'm torn, right? Because I do think that there are so many things on which him and I are such simpatico allies, freedom of speech and sure, all that, right? Sure. But for example, when it comes to postmodernism and his attacks on postmodernism and my attacks on postmodernism, that's great. But then if I ask you, so do you believe in God? And your answer is, what do you mean by do I? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean by believe in God? Then I'm taken back. So are you now satirizing postmodernists or have you become the king of postmodernists, right? So. This is why I'm a bit conflicted regarding yeah. uh, Jordan, yeah. is because I think in the grand scheme of scales, it's fantastic what's happened with him, and I only wish him the best, but I'd like for him to cut down a bit on the bullshit. But I, I think you get the Torah all wrong, because my reading of the Torah, they actually teach you how to decapitate puppies. <laughs> and I mean, I, mean I, I remember those passages. <laughs> uh, for those of you who say we only criticize Islam, look, we're criticizing now the oh holy my... books of Judaism, and we think they're also bullshit, you see? I do it all the time, so people are used to it for me. But, you know, yes, I mean, uh, there's no free speech in, in Judaism. When uh, Moses comes down, down from the mountain with the, with the Ten Commandments and some of the Jews are worshiping a golden calf, he doesn't calmly put them down, go over and say... You know, you have your freedom of religion. Go do your thing. Just leave us alone. He drops them because he's so angry. He picks up a sword with his with his brother and slaughters. I think it's thirty thousand people that day, and that God and God rewards him, right? And he gets a reward yeah, from God. God for doing that because he stood up for the true religion. So don't give me this religion of peace about Judaism or about Christianity. None of them are religions of peace. Faith does not go well with peace. Yeah, exactly right. Beautiful. Because well because said. it's only reason, it's only reason, it's only a capacity to argue and debate and use reality as the standard of truth that allows for peace. Because then the truth, we, we can discuss it. But once it's my faith versus your faith. Yeah. Well, and earlier you were talking about, you know, any idea should be debated. I mean, what's the peer review process, right? I mean, I spend years working on some project, right? Years to come up with the, 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 the topic and then collect the data and then sure. write the paper. And then you send it off to a journal. And let me summarize it for you. Your shit, your shit, your shit, your shit, go away. We're rejecting it, right? Yep. I don't go on a jihad. That's, <laughs> I, ex I expect that for my paper to eventually be published, it has to pass the highest level of scrutiny. Yeah, yeah. So why am I subjected to that lens, but 
Islam or Judaism or Jungian bullshit is not, right? Absolutely. Everything is fair game. Absolutely. 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 No.